In Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities, the Mongolian emperor said to Marco Polo, there is still one of which you never speak. Venice, the emperor said, and Polo said, every time I describe a city, I am saying something about Venice. For every Venetian, there are 40 tourists. Crowds of people arrive daily, yet the Venice they find is the Venice of their making. Mary McCarthy said this in 1956. Tourist Venice is Venice. I think of the sticker on car bumpers saying, you're not in traffic, you are traffic. Could you say, you're not in Venice, you are Venice. Venice is a faithful portrait of itself, reaching the status of an absolute fake, a replica of the real experience. What does it feel like to be inside a replica? Do people notice? In the jungle of Instagram hunters, the selfie stick is the ultimate artifact for self-sufficiency. Video bloggers upload their visit for other visitors to watch. The word amazing seems to be a popular adjective. It is on the tip of your tongue, placed there by others who have said it before. Mary McCarthy wrote, those others, the existential enemy, are here identical with oneself. After a time in Venice, one comes to look with pity on the efforts of the newcomer to dissociate himself from the crowd. It is a well-worn fact that Venice is sinking. If nothing changes, Venice will be underwater within a century. Once Venice is underwater, what would the tourists do? But there are already replacements lined up. In fact, there are several Venices on the planet. There's the Venetian Las Vegas. There's the Chinese Venice in the city of Dailan. More Venice than Venice, perhaps. The climax of Venice. A simulation of a simulation. There's floating Venice in Dubai. Is it a future Venice? One that miraculously escapes its fate by floating on the flood? A simulation of something that does not yet exist. A prayer to wishful thinking. And when Venice is underwater, will people need a headset to see it? The remade Venice would never sink, unless they press the button to do it. Lord Byron would swim across the Venetian lagoon to reach the Jewish cemetery. Here he liked to reflect. The lagoon brings 136 foot tall cruise ships with the tide. Why do they come here? Perhaps the city belongs to the world and not to Venetians. Daphne du Maurier wrote, One day the tourists will travel here by boat to peer down into the waters, and they will see pillars and columns and marble far, far beneath them, slime and mud uncovering for brief moments, a lost underworld of stone. And just as in Venice, in the future, will people be spectators? 
not with destruction in their eyes, but with awe.